Hello again, this is Dr. Tony Crook at Spine Show. I am here in Upland, California, Southern California. My new friend, Rick Olderman, he is a physical therapist, an orthopedic physical therapist in Denver, Colorado. He's done this for 25 years. He knows his stuff. As a clinician, he knows how to treat people. I like that, but I like more, and I'm intrigued with his ability to teach, his ability to speak, his ability to educate and publish. His, we'll talk about his book series, too. You can find it on Amazon through the notes, too. Is how do we get the word out there more to help people? Rick, how do we get people to do get their health healthier naturally without medications if possible by teaching them how to stretch how to exercise and you've done a great job with your series and explain this properly so rick take it over give me some of your background oh sure uh thank you dr tony first of all for having me on i appreciate it um i uh am a physical therapist like you said i've been a physical therapist for about 25 years one of the things that drove me into therapy i have back pain and i thought oh, if i go to pt school I'm going to learn all of the secret sauce to solving back pain. And uh, mm -hmm. that didn't happen. Uh, so, uh, and then when I graduated from PT school, uh, you know, I found that I was, I could, you know, help people with easy stuff like sprains, strains and post-surgical and all that kind of stuff. But when it came to difficult things like chronic back pain, sciatic pain, SI joint issues, neck pain, headaches, all that kind of stuff. Um, I just was not good at what I did. And so I, I was sunk into a deep depression because of that, because, you know, I spent a lot of years and a lot of money trying to learn this. I thought this was my calling. And so I just decided, look, I've got to figure this out or quit. And so I just decided to figure it out. Intuitively, um, I felt that most chronic pain or my own pain was due to how I was using my body. And so that was my driving force that was, uh, causing me to look where I looked and find the answers that I found. Um, so I won't go into all of those answers. We can get into the, the researchers and all that kind of stuff if you want to. But uh, my whole approach has been really focusing on how we move is what is creating and solving pain. And if we can solve this, a lot of pain will just melt away. Uh, and most of these movement patterns are unconscious in the first place. What I like that you're going into, how does, how does the, what is there an ideal movement? How do we figure out what it is? Where's the science behind it, the engineering, the mechanics that makes sure. it a reliable thing I can build a theory in my head at that point, then practice that theory with confidence. I'm giving people the right knowledge, not just guessing. Right. And, and that's a great point. A lot of what, I, I don't know about chiropractic, but a lot of physical therapists in physical therapy were just kind of you know, trying something to see if it's going to work. Right. Mm -hmm. And without uh, any, even though we've tested and we've done all these tests, we're still not sure if it's going to work. Right. So, mm -hmm. so we're just kind of figuring that out, but I've got a really, I mean, here's, I, I, I can tell you a, a real fundamental test that I use for a, one pattern of back pain, if you want, and sure. your listeners can try this at home. Good. So all you have to do, all you listeners out there is just lie down on your backs on the floor, on the couch, on your bed, whatever is easiest for you, lie down. And it's important that you do this now because if you don't do it and you're just listening to my words, you're going to say, oh, that seems to make sense. But until you feel a relationship in your body, you won't really get it. So do this test. And if you're listening to this on a, in the future, just oh, yeah. pause this right now and lie down on your back with your legs straight. Okay, so let's assume that everyone's okay. doing that. Okay. And and you can even imagine this, Dr. Tony, what that might My feel head. like for you. OK, so uh, now you're going to feel what your back feels like in this position. Right. And now go ahead and bend your knees so your feet are flat on the floor. Got it. Or if it feels better, hug your knees to your chest if you prefer that. So uh, now that you felt both with your knees bent in some way and with your legs straight, which feels better to your back? And what do you think that would be, Dr. Tony, in, in your imagination? Well, some people would be more more legs bent, feet up. Yes, yes, exactly. And that's probably 99% of, of the people out there who have back pain will say, oh, mm -hmm. my back feels so much better when my knees are bent. So why? Why is this feeling better? So if you're still on that floor, straighten your legs again and now feel the arch underneath your back. It has mm -hmm. just increased, right? And now bending your knees, your arch has decreased. So knowing this fundamental issue with the shape of the lumbar spine, the lower spine, 
will inform a lot of how you should be dealing with the rest of your day. So your goal is to flatten your spine, not necessarily flatten it, but really remove the things that are trying to pull it into an arch. Because the problem isn't so much the shape of your spine. The problem are the forces that are trying to pull it into that arch. And it would be just like uh, if I tied a rope to your low back, Dr. Tony, and I pulled as hard as I could, but you didn't move. It doesn't mean I'm not exerting force on your body. You're still fighting that force, even though your body hasn't changed its shape. And that's what a lot of these forces are acting on our body, these hidden levers that are acting on our, for instance, in this case, our back, trying to pull it into an arched position. And so, and we just found out that your arched position hurts more. Mm -hmm. So, so I can take you into the next step to figuring this out from a, what to do on a daily basis with this. Good. All right. Good. Get so on. Now, okay, great. So let's just go with it. So everyone just stand up now. So just okay. stand up and listen to what I'm saying. All right. And I really mean this stand up. <laughs> so everyone's standing up now. And what I want you to do is I want you to pay attention. Are your knees straight or locked back or are they soft? And so figure out what you're doing right now. Don't change it. Just do it and notice what, how you're standing. Do you like to stand with your knees straight? Now unlock your knees. What just happened to your back when you unlocked your knees? Mm. All right. And now if you're not sure, lock the knees again and feel what happens to your back. You will find that when your knees are softer, your back arches more when your knee, or, I'm sorry, arch, arches less. When your okay. knees are locked straight, your back arches more. What does this mean? Well, you just discovered on the floor that your back feels better when it's flatter. Mm -hmm. And now you just discovered that when you lock your knees, your back is more arched, which makes it hurt more. So if you can make one small change in your day, like softening your knees when you're standing and walking, because most of our day is spent moving around. If you can mm -hmm. soften your knees during all of that, you're going to remove one of the biggest ex you know, arch for generating forces acting on your back. That tip alone helps so many people with back pain with this type of pattern of issue. Well, like you're helping people understand how to make aware of their body and what, what, what they're feeling is a good or bad, but also what is it doing to your body long-term and throughout your day? So you're aware of when you stand, when you sit, when you lie down, okay, how do I do this more efficiently? So I understand how do I now overall correct it if need be to make my body balance better. And we've talked about certain things like levers and forces. A lot of it is the, the geometry and mechanics of our body naturally. We talked before is how our body moves in a certain way when mechanics are proper. When the cats are off, it throws everything else off too. Right. And the trick is understanding, and this is what I've been studying the last 25 mm -hmm. years, is exactly what are the things that are causing pain mm -hmm. and what are the things that are solving pain? So Good. we can drill down very specifically about the movement patterns that are causing pain. And, you know, I, I'm not like you. I don't do a lot of manipulation and stuff like that with my hands. Right. Your body doesn't break down so, like, oh, got it. Yeah, it's beat up. Well, yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, but I get a lot of people better by fixing function, mm -hmm. you know, so manipulation helps us get the, the more micro components back in alignment and all that kind of stuff. And then the movement aspect of it keeps it there. Huge. And that's, that's what keeps the long-term outcome mm -hmm. of, of manual therapy fixes is by using the body in a better way. Cause that frankly, that's what got everything messed up in the first place. That's why I right? tell people, I'm going to see someone for five minutes. I'm going to get things moving. But your job is now to work the muscle, do your stretches, do your strengthening, work on your mechanics, work on your posture. That point, when I see you in a few days, you've done your homework to make my job easy. Yes. But yeah. it's you learning about your body, like you're saying, the awareness. Okay, what does this feel like? What's going on? Is it feel good or bad? And how do I interpret that is the key to, to long-term healing. Yes. And so the things that I've discovered these past 25 years are, uh, frankly, every patient that comes into my clinic uh, are just like, uh, I've never done this before. What are you mm -hmm. talking? My other practitioners never looked at me like this. What are you doing? But they feel better almost immediately. Uh, I expect a 30 to 50% reduction in pain. I don't care how long you've been in pain. Yeah. 
after one visit. Okay. And so that's my standard because our bodies, as you know, have internal mechanisms of healing built mm -hmm. in, right? Mm -hmm. If we cut a finger, it heals. If we break a bone, it mends. So we have all of this inside of us that will heal if we can just figure out what those obstacles are that are in the way of getting making that happen. It turns well, like, out how you're using your body is one of those obstacles. Well, that's you, but you're teaching your clients about their body, not lie down, let me stretch you, let me, let me manipulate you, may move things around. Let's ed educate our patients more, Rick. At that point, they understand it's their body. So their job to take care of their responsibility. We're just giving the tools education-wise and also the mechanics how to do things properly. Yeah, uh, uh, you're exactly right. I mean, yes, I, there is a, some manual therapy and stretching and things like that involved. But no matter how much of that you do, if you don't fix how you're using your body, it's going to mm -hmm. keep coming back again and again and again. Good. And I think a lot of it is when you can help someone understand that and reset their programming to now, now reassess their body on a daily basis allows them to now continue that process. They may have a bad day. They may take a long drive. I had a patient. I went to the beach this weekend and he had an inflatable mattress, which just helps his back immensely. It deflated it, it, it popped. So oh. he hurt his back. So how does he learn over time how to get his body better so he can maintain that healthier body to not prevent, not to have to use a mattress, but also understand how to maintain it. So you're gonna have bad days, but how do you recover from those bad days? How do we learn yeah. how to do that on our own too, which is, which is great. Yeah, and as I say, uh, fix the body before you have that bad day. Yes. And that will go a long way to not having a bad day and recovering from that. Right. And my, the way I, I tell my patients that same thing is how do we make your body stronger, looser, more flexible, have better endurance so you can handle the stressors of your day, whatever that day entails. Yes. We have no idea what's going to happen. We don't have a crystal ball. Right. Right. That's, so, that's, that's, yep. yeah. So, so that little suggestion of just unlocking your knees, mm -hmm. if, if any of your listeners have back pain today and they tried that test and their back felt better with their knees bent, if they just try that for three days, that should significantly change their back pain alone. And the problem is, this is an unconscious habit, right? Yes. So how do we make that habit conscious again mm -hmm. to fix it? So the, the key is, do you wear a watch, Dr. Tony? Yes. Do you, yep. Okay. Perfect. So you wear, you, you wear it on your left wrist. Yes. So, so I would suggest wear your watch on your right wrist. All right. And that will annoy you to no end, right? Until, until... Yeah, until you acclimate to it. But that acclimation takes about three to five days, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. But until that happens, every time you notice that that watch is on your right wrist, you're going to remind yourself to unlock your knees. Good. Right? I like that association. If, yeah. If you don't wear a watch, then put a rubber band on your wrist. Wear uh -huh. a bracelet. Put a ring on the wrong finger. Wear a special necklace. Something. Put a little sticky dot on the dashboard of your car. You <laughs> know, anything like that to remind you because these are unconscious movement patterns that you've developed over years for one reason or another uh -huh. that you've got to bring to the surface and make conscious so that you can fix it. Then it will become unconscious again in a fixed way rather than a broken way. I like that because you're giving someone a way to associate a, a, a different thing that they do in their life with, Oh, if I get that, then this happens and you give themselves yourself time. I say it takes, it takes longer than three days for some people. Um, at that point, to change a habit, to make that part of their routine becomes their normal to make their overall health better. Yeah. Three days is a good amount of time, though, to see what effect that habit has good. on your body. Okay. So, for instance, let's say you just discovered that, oh, yeah, softening my knees flattens my back. How big of a deal is that to me? Well, you won't know until you try it. Mm -hmm. Right. So three days, if you if you say if you devote yourself to the next three days to unlock your knees when you're standing and walking and you find it only takes away 10% of your back pain, well then while locking your knees isn't the big deal for you. But if it takes 50% of your back pain away, well then you know it's a big deal. And we need to go maybe a little bit deeper into how you're standing and walking to solve that. Well, that, that you're making every patient a patient, a personal experience, not, hey, you fit in this category, let's just do yeah. these exercises, these stretches, blah, blah, blah. You're having someone give you feedback, what they're doing after three days, to how do they feel? How do we adjust now the feedback to do something different to cause even more efficient? And for example, that example, a uh, less back pain. You're exactly right. And, and as you know, you know, we help people better when there's a dialogue. 
happening. Mm -hmm. Not when it's a, I tell you what to do, you do it no matter what kind of thing. That doesn't yeah. solve anything because it doesn't, you know, there's individuality. So it doesn't work with patients or kids. Never works. No, no, no. Or adults. Or adults. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So uh, if you don't mind, you know, your show is called The Crooked Spine. Yep. Which I, I love. I love that title. I, I'd like to show you the second big pattern that happens with most back and sciatic pain, if you don't mind. Go for it. Go for uh, it. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, if you have unilateral back pain or mm -hmm. if you have sciatic pain or SI joint pain, what you will find is that uh, there is something called a side bending pattern occurring. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that one side of the pelvis is higher and yep. one side of the rib cage is lower. And what that's doing is creating compression on that side of the spine. It seems kind of natural to think of it that way. All right. And so that compression and you can determine this really easily without Dr. Tony or me, just mm -hmm. by having someone take a picture of your back. And Perfect. what you'll see is a bigger crease on one side of the back than the other. And that mm -hmm. means that you've got a side bending problem and it's been around for a while. For that crease to stay, it means that it's been around. If it happened just yesterday, you won't have a crease yet, no. right? Because uh, your skin has to adapt to that position. So what does this mean? Okay. So this, uh, if you have an MRI and someone has told you that you have uh, a scoliotic curve. A scoliotic curve just means you have a, a lateral curve like this oh, to man. the side. It doesn't mean it's an S curve. It's just identifying that there is a curve. So medicine uses scoliotic to, de to describe a lateral curve like this. It doesn't mean you have scoliosis though. And this kind of positioning can occur through sc congenital scoliosis that you're born with, or it can be a functional scoliosis. Sure. Majority of the time that I see, it's a functional scoliosis, which means that it's a result of how you're using your body. Well, then what am I doing that's causing this? Okay, so we have a deep reflex that we're born with called a withdrawal reflex. When we step on attack as a baby, you can watch videos on YouTube if you want. You see a, someone put down a baby and they, their whole body hikes up like this to get away from that stimulus. All right, we're born with that reflex that's a hard wiring in our body our frontal cortex overrides that deep wiring so that we can function without just completely responding to our environment throughout the rest of our lives nevertheless the hard wiring is still there so when we develop pain in say a foot an ankle a knee or hip and it's not resolved correctly your brain unconsciously starts tapping into that withdrawal reflex and it says oh i've I've got to get off of this thing. I've got to get off of this thing. And so you de slowly develop this withdrawal reflex here. Well, there are consequences to this. I mean, you can see if my pelvis is like this, we're going to have a rotational torsion going on here. Mm -hmm. That will lead to sciatic pain, SI joint pain, unilateral back pain, all sorts of things. But what is the cause of it? The cause is whatever this old thing is that your body's responding to that you haven't brought to conscious awareness yet. And so this pattern, super mm -hmm. easy to fix, all right? Can fix it in, in five seconds. But fixing the reason it's happening takes a little bit more thought. And then usually it's something, there's a problem on the same side as where that crease is happening. And that's why people develop crooked spines. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. And, and like you said, it's more functional over time. What are they doing in their environment, maybe their work environment, their home environment, their workout environment that has made their body now shift, adapt to a new environment that mechanically is not sound. So now the move patterns are off to make their body adjust. So long term, they're caught. It's usually, I'm, saying, I'm assuming, a, more of a chronic injury or, or, or chronic abnormality in their movement patterns to make that happen. Now we have to reset everything back to better uh, movement pattern, then maintain that long enough, become a more of a routine habit for them. You're exactly right. That's exactly how it works. And so uh, I don't know about your training, but my training didn't teach me that pattern. My training didn't teach me this extension pattern either. Yeah, so, my training was more of how do we refer to medical doctors more and more and more, yeah. and are we getting sued? I, that's basically yeah, you know. yeah, there you go. And so, you know, all, all of this stuff is, is, you know, is new. And mm -hmm. so this is, and, you know, 
we see tons of patients with back sciatica and all that kind of stuff. All right. So, but none of their practitioners have ever looked at that pattern in them before. And uh, it, you can solve it so quickly and easily and keep it solved by fixing the compensation patterns that you've developed in your body. All right. And so again, uh, you know, fixing those patterns, again, I expect 30 to 50% reduction in pain quickly, because if you've removed that stimulus, your body should start healing immediately. That's what it's looking for. Pain is an indication that something is wrong now, mm -hmm. right? Fix the thing now and your body will respond now to it. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't take, uh, you know, I taught, I, I was to this other guy, he's got back pain and they were saying, we're going to try this treatment, but it'll take you six or eight months for you to figure out whether it's working. I'm just like, are you kidding me? Wow. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Wow. It, it, it should be almost immediate. I mean, like you said, a pain pain is the cue response here to a stimulus. Remove that stimulus, boom, the cue response reduces. So it's like electricity. If yes. I turn off my switch, at that point, that wire goes to the light bulb. That light bulb turns off immediately. Yes. You should have the same response. Your body is a wiring system. Get that response off of it. At that point, that nerve calms down. The muscle reacts by decreasing that stimulus, decreasing the pain. Right. So that's what I've been specializing in is tracking Asking. all of these patterns down and mm -hmm. figuring out how it is not only figuring out the tighter, weak muscles that are maybe causing it, but digging down into the movement habits because it all relates. Why is all this happening? It's because mm -hmm. of how you're using your body. And so this is one of, I don't know if you found this, Dr. Tony, but I see more and more research that's saying that chronic pain is a disease. Mm -hmm. yep. Have you been finding this? Do I, you know I, why they say disease? Why they use that terminology? Why? Because they don't know why. They, they, I think they use it to make it more of a medical condition, a condition like fibromyalgia or a more of a rheumatoid arthritis, more of more of a long term condition like type one diabetes that allows them to now treat it as something that's permanent in your body that now you cannot fix on your own. Right. That's look just, my, the, that's just look, in my head. Look at the damage that does to your belief system mm -hmm. about yourself. Mm -hmm. I right? require now medications for the rest of my life because right. I can't take away I have a condition. Cup. Yes. I have a yes. condition. And so I, I believe that they, people use this, the, this term now more and more because in Western medicine, I don't believe that we're very good at solving chronic problems like back pain because we don't have a fundamental way to approach it. Uh, and, and which, I, is, I which is why I've been need, focusing on all this stuff. <laughs> we need blood work. We need imaging. We need things to, okay, okay let's rule out other issues. Once that's done, right. great. Now we know it's mechanical. Let's, yes. th let's, let's get the mechanics right. We know what normal should be. Let's get yeah. you better normal. So that when your body can function better and the pain can stay away. And now you can learn to deal with the stress of your life. Yeah. Just because, you know, seven or 20 other practitioners haven't figured out why you're having pain doesn't mean that you have a disease or that you're incurable. It just means, and, and this, this gets down into the nitty gritty of this approach versus how we're trained. Mm -hmm. We're trained in PT school. I don't know about chiropractor school, but we're trained to look at things like, you know, oh, you've got back pain. Let's look at what that one vertebra is doing. Oh, it's rotated. Okay. We're going to fix that. Right. Or you've got a herniated disc or something like that. Or, and, and so we're looking at the small picture which is great for understanding the tissue that's irritated, but we're not backing out and looking at why that tissue is irritated. I was not trained on solving pain like that. I was trained, oh, when you have this, you wanna do these things, Boom. right? It's, there it's was nothing about why. Yeah, it's, it's a link system of, if I have this condition for me, neck pain or whatever it might be, we do disc adjustment, boom. And we do this therapy, boom, and we'll see him in a couple of days. Yes. He doesn't get better. Boom. We from out the medical doctor for medications or whatever they want to do. Right. So like you said, the person's well-being, their environment, their lifestyle at that point, that's more important to me than about their pain. Cause then, you know, the source of the problem, not just where the pain is, not the where, where, the, where they feel that pain. Right. So, you know, uh, that's, that's what I've been kind of figuring out. And that's what my approach is to solving this is to get down to why. We're medicine is typically focused on the that. Oh, that tissue is irritated. That you have a disc herniation. That you have a disc bulge. That you have stenosis. 
but there, it's not so much focused on why all of those things are happening. Mm -hmm. And that, if you're going to solve chronic pain, I was on a, I was talking to another therapist uh, a few days ago and they were just like, well, who is this program good for? You know, what is your back pain program good for? Who would benefit from that? I said, anyone with back chronic back pain. And, yeah. and, and he said, and then we went on to my hip pain program. He says, well, who's going to benefit from your hip, chronic, your hip pain program? I said, anyone with chronic hip pain. <laughs> and so they want, and we did that yeah, all- they, want, they want this little, little filter versus, okay, if I give someone the whole program, they can figure out now, how does it benefit them? Yeah. Maybe the acute phase, the chronic phase or the recovery phase, or now they are well, how do you maintain that? It doesn't matter. Everything right. works. So again, fundamental the principles are there. Now you act on those principles to make the body better. Yeah. And as I described it to them, I said, the fact that they have chronic pain means that they have not been looked at from a systems point of view. So they've only been looked at from this component point of view. Exactly. And that's what has failed them. It's not that they haven't received. And so uh, then once you got down to the point when you said, I bet I, who, who's going to benefit? And I said, you're right. Anyone with chronic foot. <laughs> so, it's, it's amazing uh, when, when doctors think too much like other doctors and, and the books versus exactly how a patient would think and how do you get them to understand your information versus I'm just going to give you the doctor knowledge like you mentioned before do this because this is what the book says this is what i was trying yeah. to do versus hey what's going on with you you the person yeah. how are things going with you you know and, and when, when there's so about pain, much go ahead go ahead well when you talk about pain how do you explain p- to patients and clients exactly what is pain and how it's a good thing for you sometimes to experience pain well, this is kind of like what I mentioned at the beginning of our show. A pain is an indicator that something is wrong now. Good. So pain is a natural phenomenon. And it's, it's, it's your body's way of giving you a warning signal. Hey, we've got to fix something. We can ignore this for just so long until something mm-hmm. else starts to happen. And so in my clinic, we always did test retest. Oh, Good. What, so what hurts? What does it hurt to do? Oh, whenever I sit like this, oh, there's that sciatic pain again. Okay, we're going to, I think that's coming from this thing, right? So I, we mm-hmm. solve that thing. We get them to sit differently. How does it feel now? Oh, that's like 50% better. Okay, so what your program is, is to sit like this now to fix how you're sitting. And then you're going to do this exercise to reinforce what we did to solve that. And okay. it's as simple as that. It's it's very straightforward. There's There's no, you know... Uh, there's no magic involved. It's all about how we function, you know? And so test, you know, and that goes back to our other comment about dialoguing with the patient. I can't know that this thing is going to fix you until I hear from you that it's fixed you. And that tells me where to go with things. If it's just all me vomiting information on you, there's no learning happening here. And it doesn't matter how what you've had education wise in the past, what field you're in, as long as we're in the same language environment, at that point, that dialogue, not even not a it's not a speech, a dialogue allows them to learn about their body. And then they can understand, OK, when I do this, it doesn't feel good. When I do this, it feels good. Let me do what it feels good, even though maybe uncomfortable to make my body yes. heal long term. And I can talk to the doctor next time. Hey, I had this going on. I did this. And it worked better. Do you also hear in, in clients and patients' voices exactly the different tone of voice they have when they start getting better? Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. I mean, you can see it in their whole mannerism, right? Mm-hmm. They, mm-hmm. they come in like this, you know. Like, uh, I've been what? around the block. No one can help me. My doctor's making me come here, you know. But mm-hmm. I've been to 10 other physical therapists kind of thing, you know. And then when, you, when I explain, because I always use that skeleton, Yep, to it. explain, show them what is wrong and explain what their body is doing. This is what is relating to your pain. They're just like, holy smokes, no one's ever explained this to me before. And the reason mm-hmm. is, is because we're not trained to think of it this way. Right. That's why it took me so long to figure it all out. <laughs> well, it, so, it, it's, how about you? You're basically, how do I help people 
understand how to help themselves versus I just I'm not going to treat everyone every day and then go okay see you see you later because you're right. not you're not you're not getting you're not getting to their I want to say their heart to help their heart feel better because yeah. now their body feels better now they know where to go for help you know where to ask questions versus most doctors they don't want questions yeah. they want to look down their iPad and go this is person information give them this medication do this surgery form do this thing and then I'll then we'll figure it out later it's yeah. not you're, you're getting getting people to you're you're caring about their health care not just treating them. I, I think of it, to answer more deeply your, your initial question, I think of it as uh, I see hope return in their mm -hmm. faces because they realize that they're not broken, you mm -hmm. know? And when I see that look in people's faces, I know I've got them because Good. if we've, if, if I've gotten you 20% better, why can't I get you hundred percent better? Mm -hmm. You know, unless there's some structural damage of some sort, yeah. right? Yeah. Why, why, why is that impossible then to go the rest of the way? It's not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's giving him the hope. Okay. Now I found someone who can help me get that hundred percent. It's going to take time. I need I have to commit to this thing, but it's going to help me get there no matter how much time it takes. So that I know I've gone enough and I understand enough that it's my body. And if I do the right things, I can get this thing to heal because it's not a disease. It's not permanent. I get it to heal over time. What type of time frame Rick, do you actually give clients? I guess if there's an average per se, uh, based on condition, based on what they come on with, sure. to help them understand the healing process. Uh, we do it in the very first session. Wow. So okay. that's all part of that teaching, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, and that's the test retest. Good. If, if in five minutes I can get their pain to go down 30% or mm -hmm. completely by doing one little adjustment, in their how they're doing something then that shows them oh my gosh this can get better right then mm -hmm. so it shouldn't take weeks it shouldn't take days good it, it should be immediately in the clinic and then and then i'm really hard on my patients you know if if you don't do what i say i'll know mm -hmm. i know because i can see everything that's wrong so if you don't do it i'll know and Nice. Like I like when I fix that side bending problem in, in patients, I show them how to keep it fixed. Good. And I said, and I always tell them, I say, look, if you come in here and you, I see that side bending problem, I'll know that you're not doing what I'm asking you to do. And I'll tell you this in 20 years of fixing that problem, no one has ever come into my clinic with a side bending problem again. Good. Don't be the first. And <laughs> I don't, I, like, I don't mind threatening them. <laughs> it, it's not a threat. It's called pure. It's called pure pressure in a positive way. I'm right. gonna, I'm gonna, re, I'm gonna name it that way. I don't know. I'm gonna hold you accountable for this. Yes. You know. Yes. I'm gonna hold you accountable, and because I know I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't know it could happen, mm -hmm. right? It would be unfair of me to do that if I knew I could. They couldn't maintain it. Everyone can maintain that correction. Everyone mm -hmm. and everyone has. Well, it's something you're, you're helping, you're coaching them to build the confidence to now do it on their own over time to go, hey, when I do this, I feel better. Rick knows what he's talking about. Let me do more and more and make myself yes. accountable. You're helping him build that bridge where they're their, their accountability, not the doctor's responsibility. Exactly. You're getting the power back to their health. Exactly. And that's why all my books are called Fixing You. It's not Good. me fixing you. It's you fixing you, right? Good. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what the whole method is about is, look, I'm not making your body hurt. You are. Mm -hmm. So this is about you taking responsibility and fixing you. And I've got the information that will that will get you there. Love you've it. been you've been missing that. But now you have it. So let's do it. I like that. I was going to get to your book series next too. which how have you put your books out there from the background of it? You've gone from again from from clinician working with patients to now teacher, speaker, and now author. Why the book series? Well, okay, here, here's a really good question. So it's, it's a great question. So when I first started learning uh, about movement and fascia mm -hmm. and neurodynamics and reflex patterns, uh, one of my first mentors was Dr. Shirley Saruman, who is an instructor out of University of Washington in St. Louis. She's written two textbooks. One has been translated into seven languages. She's created hundreds of research, published research. Okay, so I've taken a lot of her seminars 
I made friends with one of the PTs. He was taking a lot of the seminars too. On on the like third or fourth seminar, I ran into him and I said, "Hey, how you how you finding the information?" And he said, "Eh, you know, I'm a manual therapist. Some of this might be good for home exercise program, maybe." You know, I said, oh, "But my patients are getting better using this information. It works." He said, "Yeah, but I'm a manual therapist. I'm not going to use this probably." Uh, it's not and a I'm just like, and that's when it that's when it struck me that all of us as medical practitioners filter information based on what we are believe will work. Mm -hmm. We discount things that we don't believe will work, regardless of whether they work or not, because of our internal biases. It not only happens in medicine, it happens in law, it happens in every industry, right? right. Everything, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so when I heard those words out of his mouth, I'm just like, oh my God, that means that all of his patients will not receive this information because of his bias of, wanted to use his hands to solve everything as opposed to fixing how people are using their bodies. Mm -hmm. And that's when I decided to first start publishing my books. So I've got a, I'm going to do an end around okay. around all the practitioners out there and okay. give this information directly to the people. Okay. And so I started that in 2009 and then I purchased my clinic in 2012. And my clinic taught me that not only is this information accurate, it's across all spectrums of types of patients. But I, what I started to see that there, there were patterns. It's not like you have an extension problem and then you have an extension problem. It's like, oh, I can see that this whole pattern, if you have an extension problem, there's a whole pattern of issues that you likely have. And I'm just now reinforcing that. And so if there's a difference in that pattern, I take a note of that, right? Um, but I've yeah. seen it thousands of times, so I know what to expect. And therefore, and the majority, like 90% of the people all fall into the same pattern of problems. So that's why I can create these downloadable home programs, Good. which are more specific to the patterns that everyone's dealing with. Mm -hmm. My books, I throw out a whole bunch of exercises to solve a whole bunch of possibilities, right? But then I realized, oh, wait, I don't have to solve all these possibilities. Almost all people are having these issues. So that's what I'm going to target, right? So that's how the books came to be. And then that's that's the difference between the books and the downloadable home programs that I've just recently created. Well, I like that you've, you've gone from, okay, I've gotten educated. I have my knowledge now. I've been in a clinician for over 10 plus years. Um, I mean, in a clinic for over 10 plus years, plus I've been a clinician for over 25 years. I have the knowledge, I have the sample size of patients I've seen. I know it works. Not only is there evidence behind it, scientific evidence, I've done it in my clinic. Now I can put it out there as this is going to be the pattern is going to help people long term understand their health and how to get themselves healthy, not just depend on a doctor or a chiropractor or someone who works in functional medicine to help them all the time. Correct. It, it's it's not in my nature to toot my horn. So my I've job. waited 25 years to make sure that I've got this nailed down. I, I wouldn't put my reputation on the line if it wasn't. And so it's a big deal for me to speak about it because I, I'll tell you, I, I, what one of the other triggers was I was getting so frustrated by patients coming in and telling me, I wish someone else would treat like you. Or can you help my sister in South Carolina? Or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. You know, it's just like, uh, I'm sorry, I'm the only one who knows how to do this. But uh, I, the other thing I wanted, reason I got my, my clinic too was I wanted to see if I could train other therapists to do and see what I see. And so I've trained lots of other therapists who have worked at my clinic and they've gotten similar results as me. Awesome. So that tells me that it's, it's not magic with me. It's because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's an application of the information. Uh -huh. uh, so if you understand how things work, anyone can see this. I mean, yes, I've been doing it for a long time, so I can see it faster and I can fix more things in, in one session because I can work really fast. But anyone can master this information. It's not difficult. If it was, I never would have figured it out. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I've read books you about it. Score. You want to see my SAT score. But it's reliable, repeatable, yes. it makes it valid. Now you can, like you, you have, you can now retrain someone to do the same thing once they have the mindset and, and the confidence they can do it and they want to 
help people the way you care for people from a global, I want to say global level, not just the local level. Exactly. Because one of the things that started happening when I first published my books in 2009, I was just like, I started getting emails from people wanting me to help them from Spain, you know, around the country and, you know, all these countries. I'm just like, uh, okay, I'll give it a try. I don't know if I can help you. And then I realized, holy smokes, I can help them via Skype. You know, it was only Skype at that time. Yeah, yeah, right? back in the day. And, and, and so, and so I'm, and, but what this also helped me see was what my books were missing. Mm -hmm. Why did they need my help? They, I wrote my books so they wouldn't need my help, but they still needed my help. So this helped me see what it is I was missing. Good. And then that's what I saw in the clinic. And then that's what I now put into the downloadable home program. So it's much more comprehensive. Well, you, so, you give someone that the, you've seen the full picture. Okay, I can adapt this over time. So you're almost making your additions to your book, your edits before the books were done. So it was done the right way. Yes. Yeah. Like I, I re completely rewrote my back pain book in 2015 mm -hmm. because I learned so much more information. But that mm -hmm. took me three years to rewrite, you know, and I'm just like, I, I can't I can't rewrite my books and spend three years doing this. So yeah. that's why I thought, you know, what's the what's an easier way that I can adapt information? And now I thought, you know, if I just make videos of everything, mm -hmm. I can just make a new video and insert it in there if I need to. So mm -hmm. that's why I've done it like this now. Nice. Well, I'm glad that you, you've gone from clinician to teacher and now you have a following and a a and same thing with chiropractic, too. Now people more aware of people's health not just a, a, a filter of looking for one problem or this disease or this thing going on. So you're, you're, you're yeah. bringing a different brand of, of high quality clinicians to the world that we need. Uh, I sure hope so, Dr. Tony. I, I just, I, I, I feel very strongly that this approach works very mm -hmm. well. And so, and so I've created an online training program for practitioners. Mm -hmm. but, but my belief is not that Oh, only physical therapists should learn this information. You know, I think anyone who is dealing with the human body and trying to help people with pain, whether it be a coach, a personal trainer, yoga instructor, you name it, you know, everyone, if, if everyone understood how the body works like this to solve pain and create pain, you know, we could start to get rid of chronic pain. Because mm -hmm. it would be nipped in the bud because your personal trainer would say, oh, you've been locking your knees. That's throwing mm -hmm. your back into this excessive arch. Let's just do these things to start stop you from doing that. And we're going to stretch this one muscle that's now become tight because you're doing that. And that's also feeding that whole pattern. And I think we're going to solve that. You know, that could be taken uh, right in the beginning. So you and I can only see the really, really difficult, messed yeah. up people. Too busy as it is. All right, right. Yeah, we're there. We're so overwhelmed with people with chronic pain. It doesn't need to be like this. And that's what disturbs me about people calling chronic pain a disease now. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. just based on a misunderstanding of what's actually happening. And accepting what people say as fact versus doing your own research. But you're giving people ways to live and ways to, if you want to call it self-treat and self-care, you don't need a degree. You don't need a big student loan that I still have 20 years later. That'll right. find, I'll take my grade with me. You don't need those things to say you can help somebody. Yes. When it comes down to you're just helping someone live a better quality of life to understand the right ways to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I used to get upset when I saw personal trainers talking to people about solving pain. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just like, well, that's exactly the people who should be talking to people about solving pain. You know, they're dealing with movement. Same with yoga instructors, Pilates, you know, coaches. Like you, you know. said before, it's taking away the biases of what we think it should be versus, hey, this is information that everyone can share and have and yeah. learn and then teach to other people, their clients, their patients, whatever it might be at any level, at any yeah. really any language, any country and enjoy that health benefit of, again, a better quality of life. Yeah. Invariably, all the all the therapists that come to my clinic, one of the toughest things for them to treat is back pain mm. and, they, and, and neck pain. Those two things. Oh, gosh. And once they figure out how to do this, I'm telling you to see them turn around, back pain and neck pain become the easiest things to treat. Mm -hmm. And it's and, and the, every single one of my therapists are just like, I can't believe how simple it is. This is so much simpler than what we're taught. 
And it is so much simpler because our medical training is teaching us all of this component parts of things. Mm -hmm. And we get overwhelmed with all that detail, you know, the name of this ligament and that nerve and where that nerve is coming from and this muscle. And then, you know, all this stuff, it's overwhelming, right? Mm -hmm. But if you understand things from a system standpoint, it's so much simpler and faster. It's almost teaching them as a clinician versus teaching them in our sense, passing the boards. You yes. well pass the boards, right? Good. Yeah. But take that knowledge now, shift it to now helping people from a system perspective. So that gives you the confidence. Every time you see a patient named Johnny, Sally, Jim, whatever, you'll have the same system no matter who they are over time as you build up that experience. Yeah. Well, I, I've heard from a lot of, well, therapists, but also uh, patients. They're just like, why don't you become a, an instructor in a school? Yeah. I said, because our national boards, <laughs> I'll mess up all the students. Yeah. Because our national boards are not geared towards systems training. Our national boards are geared towards component thinking. Mm-hmm. They, they want to know that you know the names of all of these things and where they go and where they are. Not so much the significance of that. And mm-hmm. so that's why I, I don't have any plans to teach in a university for that reason. I'll just mess everyone up. You help people that want that come out of school. And again, it doesn't have to be a PT, can be chiropractic, can be anything, yeah. really, even yeah. dentistry, that want to help people. And mm-hmm. for example, in chiropractic school, our, our school is based on passing the boards. Okay, a, a yeah. straight board. Half our class yeah. never finished because the class was too hard for them. Half our class, once they pass the boards, realized I got to go see patients now. I got to actually care for people. Half of that graduating class, five years later, doing something else. They're out of practice. They, they've left. Yeah because they yeah. weren't into the heart of helping people versus wanting just to get a paycheck. They saw the income that could work, blah, blah, blah. They, yeah. they didn't, they were not there in the heart. And then, and, and obviously you 25 is into it, me 20 into it. You, I can see you have the heart to help people again, locally, but also help clinicians that want to help people, but also help people that are, are outside of your physical realm. I, I will tell you, Dr. Tony, I, I have fun doing what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, every new patient that walks in my door, I'm so yep. excited to help them. Right. <laughs> and every new practitioner I get to work with, I'm just like, Oh man, I can't wait to show them what this is, you know? Mm-hmm. And so me, and it's funny, I was talking to another PT. He, like you just said, he got out of the business. He now yeah. works for a software company mm-hmm. and, and it's a software company for PTs. And um, he said, Oh yeah, we staff a whole bunch of PTs here because you know, they just get burned out. You know, they just, yeah, all this kind of stuff. And I said, well, gosh, I'm not burned out. I love what I do because it's so much fun and fascinating. Once you understand how it all works, it really becomes fun, you know? And so I don't think I'll ever get tired of it. It's My great. wife asked me, what's your favorite day of the week? A couple of like a month ago. And I go, Monday. Yeah. Go, Monday. That's, a, that's your work day. Because I love seeing people. Yeah. Who's coming in today? What's going to happen? What, what do I Isn't have to help with? fun? Yeah. It's great. <laughs> it's, it's tiring physically you go okay i'm done for the day but you've done your job to help people and i think yeah. when you have the heart for it you it's it's almost it's i'm gonna have my shoulders will fall off before i stop seeing people yeah before I call well, see this is the beauty of how i do things is uh-huh. my shoulders will never fall off no i do it a little bit differently than you do it really saves my body you know yeah. i'm telling you when, as as just, long as you keep your voice, you can do whatever you want to do, I guess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my my voice and my little skeleton over here. <laughs> well, Rick, you did a phenomenal job educating my patients on your program and helping them understand it's their health, helping them fix you, your fix you method through your books. I have the links on the show notes to Amazon, to all your books, also your website, your Instagram, your Facebook, and getting more and more social media out there. You, you've done a good job with that. Thank you for the discount for my for my pages. I'll get that on there too, the discount for my my, my audience. I'm going to share your information everywhere. Again, you have the heart for it. You have the mindset for it. And you're helping people learn that as a now teacher of health, not just being a clinician. So thank you for being on the show, Mr. my friend, my new friend. My, I appreciate it, Dr. Tony. Uh, I was listening to some of your other episodes and you know you certainly know what you're talking about. So I, I feel very honored that you would have me on your show. So thank and, you very much. And my sarcastic say like, yeah, I fake it really well, my friend. I fake it really well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we yeah. all do to some extent until we, we try. get we to try. It. Well, yeah. thank you. Well, I'm going to end the show, but stay, stay on the show for a second. I'm going to go to the, the back room, okay? Give me one okay. second. Look at that. Easy stuff. 
here we go. And then, and then right here, and then right here, there we go. 